And everybody is Tim Reyes of the Chief Investment Strategist here at Revere Asset Management just after 4 30 on a Tuesday night. So very quickly, stop and some others before, 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 before we begin. If you have not seen the video podcast, this right here. Um, oh, I want to update Tesla for y'all. As I as I see that right there. Um this video podcast by far the most popular thing we produce each and every week. Uh, pretty much across the globe. Uh, it is downloaded in like 23 different countries and by far, it is, I, I just can't believe that when we switched from just doing a studio show to video, how much this thing has taken off. And thank you so much for watching it. And so it is very much still uh, still very viable to watch for this week with strategies. And we make it a little more evergreen. So it's not take action on Monday. It's uh, what we're doing uh, for the entire week, giving you a watch list as well. And so hopefully you're finding great benefit in that product that we now produce. And then if you have any questions, concerns, comments, take umbrage or anything they're saying, all you have to do is email me, timmerickerasset.com. You're always free to reach out to me, the portfolio extraordinaire, Don Vandenborg, right there in America's fiduciary, helping people understand. I'll tell you what, if you don't understand why life insurance isn't an investment, go watch the video podcast from this week. If you want to understand how annuity salespeople take advantage of you and your parents, go go watch that video podcast and you will clearly understand why those products don't deliver what they say they're going to deliver to you. If you have any questions on any of that, 855-732-5932. And then if you'd like to become a client of the firm, you like the strategies to which we espouse, just call us 855-732-5932. You never ever have to worry about being spam. We don't spam people. We don't have any salespeople. We grow because you on the other end of this microphone keep recommending us to your friends and family and your neighbors. And, and we love you for it. That is all absolutely true. We love you for it. Without you, we don't exist. So, and we exist for individual investors. So thank you so much. These videos are for what, stock nerds? Your edification purposes only. They're never, ever, ever to be misconstrued as advice. If you want advice, if you need advice, if you seek advice, all you have to do is in fact, give us a call. Let's do this. Before I get into the indices, uh, let me just do a little bit of recap because we're we're in the thick of earnings here, big earnings week, but we've had some big earnings happen already. Like I've had that housing trade on and DR Horton reported uh, this morning and you can see it travels all the way up to 79, pulls all the way back, closes down 3% back of the five. This is still a good trade. Look, I, I don't want to give up the gains. Uh, would a pause here absolutely serve the housing trade right? Yeah, absolutely positively would. Uh, but we'll see what happens here. But it's been a fantastic run with DHI, with MTH, uh, you see Meritage. We bought Meritage, and I want to explain the same thing with DHI. You see this little flat area here coming out of the end of June, and then you overtake uh, the, from the 21, you overtake the five and the eight, and that little flat area, and then <laughs> away you go. Yeah, we bought Meritage close to there, and if you want to see how we bought Meritage, because it factors into a lot of how we buy equities here in the shop. And let me get this on an ATR chart for you. And so like, if you see this area, like if I draw the mean and then one, two and three average two ranges, and those average two ranges are right down here, uh, on average over 21 days, the ATR is $4 for Meritage. And so with that knowledge, what does that mean? So we buy Meritage coming off of what? the mean right and so you don't look at it going well it's above the five it's above the eight it's extended no no that's the mean right here it's really easy to see and then away it goes they don't, they don't always work so cleanly of course but that's how i want to buy equity so like today i bought um danny and i bought in the shop crm and so when i'm looking at crm i'll just take all this off crm is where so we didn't buy it up here. I've been watching CRM for a while. I didn't buy it up here when it shot up to 202. Um, goes gets gets beyond that second into that third ATR zone. I'm waiting for a pullback, most likely, meaning that there's very few exceptions to that rule, but there are no absolutes in life. There's very few anyway. So I wait for the pullback and I'm waiting for what? A pullback to me. Well, it overshoots the mean. So here's the mean, right? And then one, two, and three to the downside. And it's kind of holding the mean right here. And so today when it looked like it was going to overtake the mean and hold it. I scooped in and snapped up some shares, but uh, it closed down slightly from my entry. So we'll see if we're just still trading in this choppy range. But I like CRM 
but I want to buy things. I don't want to buy extended. I don't want to buy things that are, um, uh, I mean, you know, um, oh, I'm trying to think, I was about to type Tesla in there, but I'm trying to think of another stock that you would buy. I extended it something, I know Tesla just reported earnings. Hmm. I know, we, we just pick a SPAC. Um, how about uh, MKLI, former SPAC? Uh, this is this is easy to do. So you don't want to buy like somebody up here bought at ninety three ninety nine. Someone top ticked this stock, and even though it's got this flat area right here, look, that's the third ATR. Always wait for like a pullback to say the mean, if you want one of your most conservative entries. And then if it starts closing below the mean, right, just get out. Like here's two closes below the mean. These two candles right here. And I mean, I know that's not a straight line, but it's around $53, $54 a share. And that's a lot higher to stop yourself out at if you got in somewhere in that neighborhood than the hold on all the way down to 32. And so that's what I'm looking to do. So whether or not CRM, it's, it's just setups, you know, you can change the ticker in the box, right? So I have a fundamental and a technical setup that I'm looking for. It's about a 70%, 30%, 70% fundamental, 30% technical mix. and now I've got this range, and it looks like we want to try to overtake the mean. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Market looks a little soft, but that's the setup. That's the DR, DHI, the DR Horton setup, and we bought them both on the same time at the same time frame. And you can see uh, on the same day I bought DR uh, MTH, I bought DR DHI, excuse me. And so there it is, right? That is what the mean. It's the same because you don't know. I don't know which one's going to win DHI. Or is it going to be MTH? Well, it turns out it was both. But that's the setup. And does that work with any stock? For me to tell you that is I don't know. What I'm saying is I've got a setup that involves studying seven that combines 70% of the third mental picture and 30% uh, of the technical picture. And I'm looking for somewhere between the top five and top 10% of stocks fundamentally. And so that develop that helps me develop a level of consistency to what I'm doing, meaning oh, this is my setup, I've got my parameters, I'm going to take my shot, which gives me uh, the confidence to take my shot. And then I'll know when I'm wrong because these things don't act too erratic. So if they start acting erratic or they're not working out, you just get rid of them. And hopefully that all makes sense, what I just covered there. I didn't expect to go into it that deep, but eh, when you start talking, ideas pop in your head. So Shopify, I'm going to hold Shopify here into the print tomorrow. So I didn't have my full 10%, uh, but I had enough to make me want to hold this. And so I'm going to, I had a 5% position to start out the day. What I did to reduce my risk is take it down to two and a half. Now, if Shopify shoots up to new highs tomorrow, am I going to wish I had 5%? Absolutely. But if Shopify just absolutely tanks, am I going to be glad that I sold it down two and a half percent? You bet your bippy I am. And so when I'm looking at, say, Shopify, what am I expecting? So I've got a stock here that has an expected move. Uh, excuse me. Is that, I don't know why that box wants to populate like that all the time. Here we go. Uh, so I've got an expected overnight move of 73. Through the end of the week, we'll just call that 85. 107% implied volatility. So, yeah, some pricey things there. I think this is going to trade well, I don't know what it's going to do. I, there's a 70 for this. This is there's a 70 percent chance that Shopify stays within this number. And if it stays within this number, that's great for me. I'm, I'm glad to hold Shopify. I like Shopify long term. And I think the chart looks great heading into the print. It's not extended. It hasn't made this huge run. I think it's in a good position, but it doesn't matter what I think. It's it's the odds. And so there's a really good chance that Shopify uh, trades a 70 percent chance that it trades up by the end of the week, $85 down, $85 or that market maker move, which appears by the way, when the front week or front month volatility exceeds the next week or the following month's volatility. So that's Shopify and I'm gonna hold Shopify and see what happens there. But look, they're, you know, to explain the strategies which we've been talking about a little bit here, I don't own, we don't own a, a position in AMD in the shop, AMD. So when I'm looking at AMD, it's the same thing, right? So AMD uh, had a great quarter, great management. There's there's nothing uh, not good about what's going on at AMD. It has, it's had a tremendous 2020. And so 
look at the implied volatility and, it, and earnings are binary now remember you don't know how the market's going to accept earnings but there's about a 70 percent chance that it's going to stay by the end of the week within that 5.67 or four dollars and sixty cents we'll just call it five dollars stay within five dollars tomorrow and you can see here here's amd so it goes out we're just going to call that 68 and we're going to call this 75. So that's uh, $7, right, from, from close to where it's at here. And it's, you know, for the most part, it's kind of staying within in that range a little bit. So, it would, you know, a little bit exciting uh, stuff after hours. But we'll see where it closes. I just want to point all of this out to you on things that report because the market makers, the people that sell you the calls and sell you the puts that, oftentimes uh, individual investors buy, they're hedging their risk already by charging you more premium. And you know they're charging you more premium than normal based on, you can see it by percentage and by price. Uh, percentage is a little easier to see because you can see that this week's implied volatility is higher. It's only Tuesday too, it was higher than next week's, higher than the following weeks. And so that that's an indication that that binary event of earnings, you're being charged more for if you wanna participate in the options market with AMD. If you're just buying equities, of course, that's a delta of what? A delta of one. But they're telling you right here, they're, they're, I mean, if you, they're telling you the odds that um, AMD has a 70% chance right here of staying within this move overnight and this move by the end of the week. And so you always want to, be, you want to use these kind of numbers to temper uh, your excitement to know if, if it stays, the people that win consistently in the options market are the people that understand what I'm explaining to you. And so they're the house. They're selling you those calls and puts and they're doing it at a price that makes sense to them. They're doing it at a price that makes sense to them. So you can, you see uh, <laughs> that makes sense to them. So they're, they're taking the risk. Now, AMD travels all the way up to 85 for all that. Clearly that's, that, that would be a runner. And that risk has not been priced. And that's why when you exceed, there's a certain number, and I call them runners, and I haven't had an opportunity to show you that in a while. But I, I, when people do uh, individual training sessions with me uh, around earning season, I always try to show them uh, what a runner looks like. I give them the metric for it. And it's, it's a lot of fun when you get a runner because they keep running because that risk hasn't been factored in. But look, you, and you'll know if it's a runner based on what's happening here, but this is not a runner. But you'll see a lot of big excitement, like up uh, nine or 10%, you know, and that's nothing to sneeze at, right? Uh, but is it really a runner? Is it really anything to be that super duper excited about? Eh, not really, we'll see what opens up tomorrow. Hopefully that discussion makes a whole bunch of sense. That's why when you see shop tomorrow, whether shop is up, uh, whether shop is up seventy or eighty dollars tomorrow, is it within the realm of the expected move? Was it already priced in? And so that's that's why I give you that talk tonight. And so let's do this. Let's look at S and P's here. So I take you to a chart here. Look, I talk a lot of individual stocks with you. Uh, because what you need to understand is the markets haven't really gone anywhere. Here's the S&Ps, right? Uh, a couple of days before that big drop. And you're really, I mean, look at this. You're really nowhere, nowhere beyond that. You're, you haven't gone anywhere in over a month. And so, you know, it, it, when they say it's a market of stocks, not a stock market, I mean, this is what you're, you're looking to find the things that can outperform. And I know that makes, of course, you're all going to find the things that outperform, but you need a methodology to do that. You need rules to do that. And this is why I think, and a ton of people will disagree with me. I think we're on the cusp of seeing the indexing go out of favor because do you want 500 stocks in an index or do you want maybe the top 10, top 20 stocks that are outperforming? and rotate through those or understand where rotation is coming from. And notice I'm, it's, it, it doesn't have to always be an Amazon and it doesn't always have to be an Apple, which get all the attention. Look, MTH, DHI, you know, outperformance. How about TLT? 
Like if you look from uh, TLT has outperformed the markets. And so from 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 the point where S&P's peaked, here's six that 6 8 day that we just talked about to where TLT is now, that's outperformed. How about GLDM? Yeah, so and find your spots and and so like do I want to add the gold right here? Eh, probably not. I, I'm not excited to do that. Why? Because it's not consolidating. It's not on my entry rules. Well, just because it's on my entry rules doesn't mean it, I'm good. You miss a lot of opportunities, but you have to be okay with that because you need, and I'm okay with that because I have a process to find a different opportunities. So um, that's great. How about GDX? What did GDX do today? Yeah, it's, do I want to buy GDX beyond the third ATR? No, I don't. Here it is. Did I want to buy it here? Mm -mm. Even though it goes higher. I'm going to get an opportunity eventually, either GDX kind of flags out and forms a pennant, or um, it stays up here and the mean comes up to get close and meet it. One of, the, one of those things will happen, but it just takes a little patience. And so that's why when you come and join the firm, we don't just willy-nilly add things to you. That's called, that's more risky than anything. When you when you go to a mutual fund or you go to a Raymond, you know, pick, pick any of the um, traditional advisor brotherhood. You just get added willy-nilly to whatever the hell they're doing, and they don't care. They they don't care at all. And so you want to you want to pick and choose where and how things get added to a portfolio. So uh, NQs. So if we do the NQs from the same time frame, so here's N615. Now this clearly right doesn't pull back as much, and you're higher. So the Nasdaq stocks have outperformed. YMs. The YMs on six nine. Yeah, you're nowhere near. Well, I shouldn't say you're nowhere near. You're, you're a little far off the pace there. How about the RTY? So you've had one index that's outperformed. And by the way, the Russell's a little closer than the S&Ps are. A little, well, that's not true. It's a little further off. But not by much. There's a big drop. And now I love this pattern that's formed above the Russell holding above the 200-day. If there's one that holds that, that's, that's bullish in my view. And so... Yeah, I think you just want to be careful here. Markets have had a really good run, and now they're digesting. And so, uh, if you're going to, you know, endeavor into individual stocks, have done, I don't think buying extended is the way to go. I think looking for things that fit your criteria, your rule set, especially not extended, uh, is crucial right here. Look, this is just one big long flat base, but what you have inside of here now is a three weeks tight forming which is bullish. But look, if it breaks the three weeks tight to close down here, that breaks the three weeks tight. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what happens. It's the end of the week. It's the last week of the month. A lot of funny things happen in the last week of the month. You have the Fed tomorrow. Jay Powell has a press conference. You've got tech uh, talking on Capitol Hill tomorrow. And then on Thursday, you have the biggest stocks in the world are reporting. You've got uh, Amazon, you've got Apple, Facebook, and Google all reporting on Thursday night. It's a huge day. And so um, tomorrow's Wednesday, man. I'm telling you, tomorrow and Thursday are some of the biggest days this year in the market so far. And so I think you just understand, understand where we are in time and space, trade small. And, you know, you don't have to hold full positions and things. And so, look, a 2.5% position in shop, uh, 2.5% position in the shop in a stock with, uh, I've got like what a two or two and a half percent gain in it going into the print tomorrow. That's not, if something terrible happens tomorrow, that's not going to hurt. Me. That's not going to destroy me. But some of you, unfortunately, in stocks that are reporting earnings have maybe 10% or 20%. And if they go the way you want them to go up, fantastic. But when they, when they don't do what you think they're going to do, that's when it, that's when you you just ruin whole months by by poor position sizing. And so hopefully these videos help uh, give you the courage of your convictions to uh, to do things uh, on the on the safe side and understand that you can still absolutely positively get ahead. And so with that, my fellow stock owners, more loves. Oh, it helps. And I Don Vanderbilt, he's got the video tomorrow night, and I'll be back with you Thursday for that all important big earnings evening together. And then Friday, of course, is the. Video podcast. And with that, I hope you have a great night. I'll see you at the next update.